Imagine, if one day you punched a wall and found a secret door that was connected to another world, and any items or skills you learn can be brought back to the real world, wouldn't that be awesome? The story begins with a girl being harassed by some thugs and we are introduced to the main protagonist, Yuya, a high school boy who is always harassed for being fat and ugly. He attempts to be a hero but ends up getting beaten up pretty badly. Maybe Yuya should have just stuck to playing video games and watching YouTube like the rest of us. Fortunately, the thugs ran away as cops arrive. The girl offered her shoulder for support to a beaten down Yuya, but Yuya was a Sigma male, so he told her that he was fine and walked away. When he gets home, we see his house is covered with graffiti calling him names, probably done by his brother and sister. We then learn that ever since he was young, he has been bullied by everyone, even by his own parents and siblings. I guess they're all probably upset by the food shortage that Yuya is causing them. It was only his grandfather who would look after him and taught him some valuable lessons but too bad those lessons didn't include on how to avoid getting beaten up by bullies. His grandfather eventually died, but he left his house and all his savings to him. His parents tried to contest the will, but in the end, Yuya was given everything. His parents and siblings completely abandoned him. So, he spends his days working part-time after school. When he's graduating from middle school, his yearbook only has mean comments about him. As he tries to leave for his job, he gets stopped by his bullies and they remind him that he's still their errand boy and uses him as their punching bag while his brother and sister watch and enjoy it from a distance. Well, Yuya's brother and sister have clearly been taking notes on how to be the worst family members ever. When he finally gets to his job, his boss is fed up with him being late and tells him not to come back. Yuya is having a bad day and he is depressed about his situation back home. So he finally uses his secret move, a wall punching technique that opens hidden rooms. And who said violence never solves anything? Yuya found a way to another world. But too bad his stats are as low as my grades back in school. So, Yuya is going to need some serious stat boosts if he wants to survive in this new world. Yuya then finds himself in a room which is like, Harry Potter's cupboard under the stairs, but way cooler. He finds a note on the table that he can't read, but thanks to his cheat language skill, he can understand it now. Turns out, the house belonged to a great sage who was about to kick the bucket, but he left everything behind for whoever finds it. How convenient. Yuya can practically hear the cash register ringing with all the valuable items he now owns. But wait, there's more. The house is protected by magic, so no one can break in except for the owner. Yuya feels like he's living in a real-life video game with all these god-tier weapons and exceptional items lying around. Now all he needs is a catchy theme song and he's ready to start his adventure. Yuya steps outside and starts practicing with his sword but his skills were so awesome that even the grass started to dodge his swings, but he managed to learn a basic sword skill anyway. Then he decides to train with each of the weapons and he gains a number of skills, but despite his progress, his stats remain at level 1, relatable. Suddenly, a level 300 monster attacks Yuya's house but since his house is protected by magic, the ogre is no match for the impenetrable wall. Feeling brave, Yuya decides to fight back. He threw his spear, and it went right through the monster, instantly killing it in one hit. Talk about a lucky shot. And to top it all off, the spear returned to Yuya, like a loyal puppy returning to its master. Who needs to level up when you have god-tier weapons like these? The monster then disappears, dropping a number of items. Yuya suddenly reaches level 100, and he is more shocked than a cat wearing a cucumber on its head. He also gets to convert the special items he received into cash. Later that night, Yuya goes through a change in his body that makes him feel like a caterpillar turning into a butterfly. When he wakes up, he finds that his body is different and his clothes no longer fit. He's not sure what is going on, and his mirror is still broken so he still hasn't seen himself. 
but since this is a magical world he finds himself a magical dress that is auto-adjustable plus it also provides magical bonus. Yuya is then attacked again but this time it's only a level 200 slime monster, he easily destroys the monster and gets more skills and special drops like a coffee slime and levels up to 150. Looks like Yuya's leveling up faster than a rabbit in a carrot farm. He tries some of the coffee slime and thinks it's better than Starbucks. After that, he spends every day in the other world leveling up and defeating monsters. Finally the school break is over and Yuya still hasn't fixed the mirror or seen his new appearance. At school, he immediately becomes the center of attention. In class, he is approached by his bullies, but they don't recognize him, thinking he is a transfer student. When he tells them he is Yuya, everyone is shocked, even he is also shocked when he sees himself in the washroom mirror. As he walks out of class, his brother and sister confront him about his new appearance and start mocking him, calling him a loser. But before they can continue their insults, a limo pulls up, and the girl he saved is looking for him. We see that the girl instantly recognizes Yuya and calls him by his name. This girl must have some kind of divine eye that she is able to recognize despite his transformation even when his own siblings failed to recognize him. She introduces herself as Kaori and offers him to join Jose Academy, which is an academy for the super elite. We learn that Kaori is on the student council, and her father is the chairman of the academy. Yuya is flattered by the offer but he feels unworthy. His sibling interrupts and tries to join, but Kaori refuses as they have previously mistreated Yuya. Kaori explains that the academy values personality as much as academics and encourages Yuya to enroll. She takes him to the academy where they meet the chairman, Tsukasa Huju, who thanks Yuya for saving his daughter. Tsukasa offers to pay his tuition as gratitude, but Yuya hesitates, feeling like he won't fit in with the academically gifted students. Tsukasa explains to Yuya that everyone has their own talents and through challenges and fun, he will discover his own. Well that's not a problem for our Yuya as he has a free pass to another world where he can get any talent he needs. Tsukasa suggests Yuya try out the school for a day. A teacher named Sawada enters who is an authority in the science world. Tsukasa wants Yuya to attend her class as her classes are popular and easy to understand. Yuya nervously prepares for his first class at the Jose Academy, unsure of what to expect. When he enters the room, all the students stare at him in shock, leaving him to wonder what they think of him. Unbeknownst to him, they're simply stunned by his striking good looks. He takes a seat at the back and shares a book with the girl beside him, but she seems distant, making him worry that she dislikes him. This girl is smart, I guess she already suspects that Yuya will become a harem king in the future and she want to keep her distance from him. During class, Yuya finds the students more active and engaged than he expected. During break, a group of students bombards him with questions like if he is a pop idol or has a girlfriend, but Ryu comes to his rescue and takes him to the cafeteria which is a all-you-can-eat buffet heaven where everything is extremely cheap and if you order the daily special it's free. They meet another student named Shingo from the same class and as they talk about anime and video games, Yuya becomes more comfortable with Ryu and Shingo, but he can't help but notice everyone staring at him, Yuya thinks it's because of his different uniform but it's actually because of his good-looking face. Yuya enjoyed his day at the school and was impressed with how the students treated him. This academy is a dream academy for Yuya. Tsukasa asks if he wants to enroll, but Yuya being the main protagonist can't easily accept this great offer and has to build up some drama so he shows some more hesitation and after a while he finally accepts to join the academy. Kori is also glad that Yuya has decided to join and invites him to hang out and they check out some shops. They decide to try out the crepe shop and have a good time trying the crepes. Yuya worries about eating too much and returning to his original shape but he has cheat skill to get those six-pack abs in an instant so it's fine. Yuya asks Kaori how she recognized him despite his changed appearance, and Kaori tells him that she recognized him by his eyes. So, next time Yuya should also wear sunglasses if he needs to go incognito mode. She offers him a bite of her crepe, 
and they both try each other's food while people around them admire their cuteness. Later that night, he returns to the other world and fights some monsters, leveling up to 235. Yuya decides to leave his house to find stronger monsters to fight. Suddenly, he hears a scream and rushes to save a girl from a level 200 goblin general. He defeats the goblin but gets blown away by a stronger and faster goblin. Yuya doesn't give up and uses different weapons to defeat the goblin. He finds out that the girl he saved is Princess Lexia, after that Yuya is back home and thinking about the encounter with the girl, and despite his concerns, he assumes she's okay since knights helped her. Yuya considers buying new clothes with the money he's made in the other world, as he is wearing the same enchanted dress all the time. Maybe next time he should hunt for a magical dress that could also transform into another dress, then he will never have to change again. Meanwhile, we see a photographer who is angry with a model named Sho for being late to a photo shoot which is focused on the theme, shopping with hot boyfriend. He decides to find a replacement within the mall as everyone, including the other female model named Miyu, is also waiting. As Yuya enjoys some retail therapy, two girls approach him, showing interest in hanging out. Suspicious of a sales tactic, he politely declines them but unbeknownst to him, his rejection leaves the girls in a mesmerized trance, completely captivated by his godlike charm. Meanwhile, the photographer is struggling to find a replacement model for the photo shoot and spots Yuya, thinking he'll be perfect. The photographer explains their situation and, despite his lack of modeling experience, Yuya reluctantly agrees to pose as Miyu's pretend boyfriend. During the shoot, the photographer urges Miyu to get closer to Yuya to get more reactions from him, and it works, Yuya starts giving all kinds of comical reactions when Miyu wraps her arms around him, and he starts sweating when she holds him close and the photographer thinks it's perfect. Perhaps this photographer has a different kind of theme in his mind. Meanwhile, in the other world, Princess Lexia is determined to find and thank her savior, but her knight dismisses the idea of someone living in the dark forest. However, Lexia is determined to search for the mysterious person who saved her. The knight warns Princess Lexia about the dangers of returning to the dark forest, but she convinces him and the others to come with her anyway. Poor knights have no choice but to obey the arrogant princess. Meanwhile, the fashion shoot finally wraps up, and Yuya is exhausted. When Miyu thanks him, he nearly chokes on his drink. She offers him her handkerchief, but Yuya hesitates because he's all sweaty. Looks like getting close to a girl is more challenging for Yuya than fighting monsters. Yuya thinks Miyu is a natural at modeling, but she confesses that she made plenty of mistakes when she started out. Miyu opens up about why she got into modeling, her busy parents never had time for her, so she wanted to be noticed. And she continued because she loved bringing happiness to people. She encourages Yuya to pursue his dreams and enjoy the journey. As they chat, the photographer takes a bunch of candid pictures of them, but at that moment suddenly, the model show arrives and make a move on Miyu, making her uncomfortable. Yuya intervenes, Sho tries to punch him, but Yuya switches to his god mode and effortlessly throws him to the ground, leaving everyone in shock. Yuya worries about causing a scene and getting into trouble for attacking a model. However, the crowd cheers for him, thinking he is cool. Sho is surprised about his unexpected defeat despite his boxing skills. The photographer tells Sho that he has recorded the incident and asks him to apologize and leave. Miyu expresses her gratitude to Yuya for helping her with Sho and the photographer offers Yuya more modeling gigs, but Yuya declines, feeling he is not good enough. The photographer respects his decision, and they end up giving him all the clothes from the shoot as thanks for his help because they weren't able to pay him since he is not a professional. On the way back Miyu is looking at photos of today's shoot, she expresses a desire to work with Yuya again and the photographer teases Miyu about her feelings for Yuya. It seems like Yuya might have another potential candidate for his growing harem. Back at home, Yuya organizes his wardrobe, packing all of his new clothes and feeling grateful for the unexpected turn of events. Meanwhile, in the other world, 
we see Lexia's knights struggle against goblins and they are probably cursing the princess in their minds. As a goblin tries to attack the princess, Yuya appears and kills it. Lexia is overjoyed to see that Yuya is the real deal, and he finishes off all the remaining goblins like a pro. He even treats one of the knights. But wait, things take a surprising turn when Lexia approaches Yuya with a serious expression. And then, out of the blue, she asks him to marry her shocking everyone. Back in the real world we see that a woman from an agency is looking at Yuya's pics from the photo shoot and is desperate to sign him. She orders her associate to find him before any other agencies get to him. Seeing how he was able to stand up next to Miyu when he is just an amateur, she is determined not to let him get away. After that we see that Princess Lexia shocks everyone by proposing to Yuya, leaving her loyal knight Owen dumbfounded. He reminds her of her royal status and their lack of knowledge about Yuya. But Lexia insists it's love at first sight, sparking a spirited argument. Yuya jumps in, interrupting their argument, and invites them to his house. Owen is surprised to find out that he lives in this dark forest. Owen introduces himself as the captain of the Arzelian Knights, and Lexia proudly reveals her princess title. Yuya introduces himself, but his name throws them for a loop. They wonder if he's from another country, while Lexia fantasizes about him being a secret prince. Owen, however, has different concerns. Owen tells him that they were searching for Yuya to properly thank him for saving Lexia. She's been infatuated with him ever since. Lexia, true to her romance novels, proposes to Yuya again. Overwhelmed, Yuya thinks it's all too sudden. Lexia believes all love story has obstacles, so she suggests starting as friends. This princess is really determined. Owen asks Yuya to visit the royal palace at the king's request. Yuya hesitates, but Owen insists it's a royal command. Yuya reluctantly agrees and while leaving Lexia tells him to prepare himself because she plans to win his heart next time when they meet. On the other hand we see a masked man, probably part of the royal family. He is furious after the assassins he sent after Lexia were taken out by monsters in the dark forest. He wonders how Lexia managed to return unharmed and warns his man not to fail him again. Back in the real world, Yuya marks his calendar for the day he plans to meet the king. I bet that's something he never imagined he would need to jot down on his calendar. Anyway, Yuya heads to the academy in his new uniform and everyone's eyes are on him, assuming he's a famous model. The director greets him but he has a busy schedule so he just advises him to enjoy his life. Yuya is introduced to the class as an official student, reuniting with Ryo and Shingo. Then, we're taken to a soccer game where we witness Ryo stealing the show with a goal. Yuya is then approached by a girl named Kaide Kazuma who wonders why he isn't joining the game. Yuya explains that his gym clothes haven't arrived yet. Ryo takes on the opposing team all by himself, and he pulls a clever trick by passing the ball to his teammate Akira Ichinose. Akira charges toward the goal, ready to unleash his special move, but he messes up and accidentally kick it straight at Kaide. But guess what? Yuya swoops in, not only stopping the ball but also scoring a jaw-dropping goal in the blink of an eye. Everyone is shocked, left wondering how he moves with such lightning speed. Yuya quickly checks on Kaide, making sure she's alright, but she's left speechless, utterly captivated by his incredible skills. Akira rushes to apologize, offering to be Kaide's servant, but she assures him she's fine and kindly declines. Ryo vouches for Akira's quirky nature, and Akira thanks Yuya for saving them. Later, Kaori changes for gym class while girls discuss Yuya, seeing him as a prince. Kaide updates Kaori on the events, leading the other girls to speculate on Yuya's relationship status due to his coolness. However, both Kaori and Kaide insist nothing has been confirmed. Well Yuya's future harem seems to be pretty bright. During his next class, Yuya waves to Kaori on the field, but chaos erupts as the dangerous delinquent group known as the Red Ogres arrives on motorbikes, swinging their bats and threatening everyone on the field. 
Yuya spots his siblings among the red ogres. Kori questions their presence, and Yuya's brother, Yuta reveals her identity as the director's daughter. They seek revenge for her dismissive attitude towards them and Yuya's enrollment. Despite Kori's warning about the police, the goons believe they have the time to abduct her. They surround Kaori, and we see that Yuya's leg is shaking from the emotional trauma even though he has defeated much stronger monsters in the other world. His friends worry as he panics but snaps out of it. He opens the window and jumps out, shocking everyone since they are on the fourth floor, but Yuya lands unharmed. Yuya confronts his old bully, Araki, who sends his boys. Yuya effortlessly dodges and disarms them. Omori, an enormous guy, tries to stop Yuya but is easily tossed aside. Yuya reaches Kori, but the gang boss attacks with his bike. Yuya evades the bike attack, causing the boss to crash. After that, police arrives and arrests all the delinquents. Yuya checks on Kaori, who suddenly becomes weak but he catches her, and they share a moment. Meanwhile, Yuta thinks that the Red Ogres were useless, but he suddenly gets choked by the boss who blames him for their situation. His sister pleads for mercy but gets kicked aside, leaving Yuta gasping for air. But Yuya gets in the way, breaking them up. Yuta expresses gratitude, while the boss charges at Yuya, only to be scared off. As the students wonder, Yuta questions why Yuya saved him. Yuya simply says that he couldn't abandon his family, despite their past treatment. His siblings are moved to tears, begging for his forgiveness and apologizing for everything they have ever done. He is joined by his friends, and he apologizes for the trouble that has occurred because of him, but they are all amazed by him and Yuya is happy to be with them. Afterwards, we see that Yuya goes to explore the dark forest to hunt some monsters, keeping in mind Owen's warning about their capability of destroying an entire city. After hunting, while he is leaving the forest, he sees a pup being attacked by an orc. He examines the orc's formidable stats and feels overwhelmed, considering abandoning the rescue mission. However, witnessing the orc's relentless brutality, Yuya's conscience kicks in, reminding him of his grandfather's teachings. Mustering his courage, Yuya boldly confronts the orc and surprisingly defeats it with a single shot. Well when you have godlike weapons, levels and stats are just jokes. Yuya approaches the pup and uses a healing potion to heal its wounds. Discovering that the pup is alone and seeking a home, Yuya offers to take it in. The pup seems to understand what Yuya is saying and accepts his offer. Suddenly, a window pops up, showing Yuya has acquired the tame ability. He also learns that the pup is a level 500 black Fenrir, which impresses him. He names the pup Knight due to its black color and heads back home. While examining the items he got from defeating the Orc King, Yuya finds a brush known for its hair-stimulating abilities. Amusingly, he decides to use it on his pup, Knight. Well, Yuya's pup is now probably the most well-groomed monster in the land. Yuya also notices that his level has not increased despite defeating a high-class monster but he remains hopeful that he will understand the leveling system eventually. Back in the real world, Yuya leaves Knight at home as he goes to school. There he asks his friends about pet shop and they are excited to learn that he has a pet. His friends suggest a nearby pet shop but only Kaide offers to go with him as the rest of them have some other plans. When Yuya arrives home, Knight eagerly greets him, and he presents him with the items that Kaide helped him pick including a new collar and he decides to take a stroll. At the park all eyes are on them. People can't help but admire Yuya's coolness and Knight's cuteness. Unexpectedly, Yuya runs into Kaori, and he introduces Knight to her. Kaori can't resist petting Knight, finding him utterly adorable, while bystanders believe they make a picture-perfect couple. Kori asks about Knight's breed, but Yuya pretends not to know because he can't tell her that it's a monster dog from another world. Yet, Kori thinks that he's smart and is thrilled that he adopted Knight. Suddenly, a familiar voice calls out to Yuya and it's Miyu, the model he had worked with. As luck would have it, she lives in the area and frequents the park for walks. 
Yuya introduces the two girls, causing quite a stir as people recognize Miyu's fame. To avoid drawing too much attention, Miyu gracefully departs, though she looks forward to their paths crossing again. Once she leaves, Kaori wonders if Miyu is Yuya's girlfriend, but he thinks that she's way out of his league but Kaori thinks otherwise. Suddenly we hear a woman screams as a man snatches her purse and flees. Yuya commands Knight to chase after the thief. They check on the shaken woman and are soon reunited with Knight, who has successfully apprehended the culprit and drag him down towards them, and yet nobody finds it suspicious. Maybe thieves getting caught and dragged by puppy are common in their neighborhood. Yuya instructs Kori to call the police, but the man manages to break free and lunges at Kori. Without hesitation, Yuya steps in, expertly disarming and restraining the man. The crowd erupts in cheers, deeming him incredibly cool, while Kori expresses her gratitude for saving her again. The police arrive and they hand the thief over to them. We are then cut to Yuya and Knight's venture deeper into the dark forest. They face numerous monstrous adversaries, including another orc king. However, this time, Knight displays its impressive skills, single-handedly taking down the orc king with a fierce neck bite. Moving on, they encounter a level 630 crystal deer. Yuya stealthily observes the creature, hoping to devise a strategy, but it still detects his presence. With no time to ponder, the deer charges at them. Knight launched its attacks, but the deer fought back with its magic, creating an explosion to defend itself. The deer then attacks them by firing a blast of water, but they manage to dodge it. Yuya works on a plan and instructs Knight to create an opening for him. Knight seemed to have taken this literally, as he bit off a piece of the deer's neck, creating an opening for Yuya to deliver the finishing strike. Examining the item drops, Yuya's attention is captured by a peculiar box which is a portable bath that miraculously stays clean and provides privacy. Yuya decides to try it out at home, realizing it's not safe to bathe in the middle of the forest. Thus, he and Knight make their way back home for a night of relaxation in the luxurious bath. At this point I wouldn't be surprised if Knight turns into a beautiful girl and join Yuya's harem. The following day, Yuya and Knight engage in a battle with a needle roller. Though initially struggling, he wins by anticipating its movements, causing it to become stuck in a wall. Yuya's level increases to 240, while Knight reaches level 510. Unexpectedly, the impact creates a crack in the wall, revealing a hidden cave. Inside the case they discover a lifeless body and a book lying on the ground. Yuya investigates and realizes it's the Book of the Sage. Meanwhile we see someone assigning an assassination task of princess to a masked girl. As Yuya reads the book, he learns that the sage was the ultimate overachiever, mastering every kind of skill and becoming as powerful as a god. Even the gods asked him to join them, but he declined their invitation. The book itself starts communicating with Yuya, cautioning him that as he grows stronger, people may start fearing him, and advises him to seek trustworthy companions. The book mentions that it would inscribe any one thing that he would like to know, and Yuya asks to learn magic. So the sage fills the book with all of his knowledge about magic, but he notices that Yuya can't use magic because he doesn't have the magical pathways in his body since he is from another world. However, the sage decides to pass on his own magical pathways to Yuya, telling him to find happiness and good fortune. Yuya returns to his house and starts learning how to use magic from the book. He starts off by sensing the magical energy around him and learns the magic energy manipulation skill. He learns that all he needs to do is gather magical energy in his hand and imagine the magic he wants to use. So he goes outside to try it out, imagining a ball of water. It seems Knight is also learning, he tries shooting the ball at a tree, and it turns out to be ridiculously strong, blowing straight through the tree. Well, Yuya doesn't have to enroll in Hogwarts anymore. Meanwhile, in the royal capital, Owen presents his report to the king, informing him about Yuya. However, the king becomes furious when Owen mentions the princess's proposal, wrongly assuming that the harem king seduced his daughter. 
During class, Yuya thinks about the sage's book, which had warned him about carefully using the magic he is learning. The teacher reminds the students about an upcoming camping trip and divides them into groups of four. Yuya finds himself grouped with Kaide, Akira, and a girl named Rin. Kaide eagerly anticipates the trip, but Yuya mentions his lack of camping equipment. Kaide suggests they go shopping, so they head to the mall. Shingo is surprised to see Kori join them, and Ryo can't believe that Yuya is friends with her, as most people find her unapproachable due to being the director's daughter. However, she encourages them to treat her like any other student. Yuya wonders about Akira's absence, and Shingo explains that he couldn't make it. Inside the mall, they assist Yuya in selecting a backpack. They decide to take a break and visit an arcade. Shingo becomes excited at the sight of his favorite character in a crane game but admits his lack of skill. Yuya decides to give it a try, utilizing his detect weakness ability. Successfully identifying the weak spot, he wins the figure in a single attempt. Kaide requests him to win a cat prize, and with his skill, Yuya effortlessly secures it for her. He continues his winning streak, obtaining prizes for all his friends. Well, Yuya would put these game shops out of business if he visits here regularly. Kori expresses her gratitude, mentioning that it was her first time at an arcade. While the girls embark on a shopping spree for clothes, the guys take a break at a cafe. Yuya reflects on the joy he experiences hanging out with friends for the first time. However, their pleasant moment is disrupted by a sudden alarm, signaling a fire and the urgent need for evacuation. They reach the staircase, and Yuya inquires the guard if he has seen his friends. A call from Kaide reaches Ryo, informing them that they are still trapped upstairs. Yuya rushes up the stairs, thinking about his friends, and he reaches the source of the fire. Recognizing that the sprinklers are insufficient, Yuya decides it's time to utilize his magic. With a layer of water enveloping his body, he fearlessly charges through the flames. Overwhelmed by smoke, the girls start losing consciousness while Yuya frantically searches for them. Just in the nick of time, he reaches them, pondering if there are others still trapped. Using his detection skill to scan the building, it becomes apparent that they are the sole survivors. Yuya shields the girls with his magic, but as the fire intensifies, he worries about their survival. Yuya runs around looking for the exit, but the roof collapses, and as he dodges, Kori drops the gift he gave her. Faced with a dead end, Yuya realizes that there's no way out, prompting him to employ his magic to smash through the building and create his own exit. Despite the building trembling, Yuya successfully evacuates with the girls. The girls get treated, and the firefighters reprimand him for being so reckless. Kori's father arrives, expressing gratitude for saving his daughter once again, and Yuya returns the honor pin he picked up. As Kori embraces her father, Yuya ponders the essence of a family, feeling that he lacks such connections. However, upon arriving home, Knight eagerly rushes to him, leading him to realize that they are indeed family. Meanwhile in the other world we see a sacred rabbit who gets attacked by a girl who informs him that she is here to invite him to destroy this world and leaves. Yuya discovers that magic is the manifestation of his imagination. Intrigued, he decides to experiment with using magic for teleportation, visualizing the place he desires to go. To his delight, he successfully opens a portal that transports him to the depths of the dark forest. Although he realizes he can only travel to familiar locations, he considers using magic to return home tonight, even during his field trip. This skill will surely help him manage his harem in the future. Venturing into a cave together, Yuya and Knight encounter a group of goblins. Armed with his legendary sword, Yuya effortlessly defeats them and collects valuable items they drop. Satisfied with their progress, they decide to call it a day. However, Knight senses a disturbance and rushes off, prompting Yuya to follow. Utilizing his invisibility skill, Yuya cautiously proceeds and stumbles upon an injured girl under attack by goblins. Eager to aid her, Yuya is halted by Knight's intervention. 
The girl fights back, using her special threads to sever a goblin's arm. Despite her valiant effort, an elite goblin lands a blow that renders her unconscious. In response, Yuya and Knight join the fight. Yuya swiftly kills the goblins with his divine whip. After the battle, Yuya contemplates what to do with the injured girl. While he considers taking her home, Knight discourages the idea. Caught between conflicting options, Yuya becomes startled as the girl awakens, surprised to find herself being carried by him. She loses her balance and falls to the ground. Showing kindness, Yuya offers her a healing potion, which instantaneously cures her wounds. Amazed by its effectiveness, the girl inquires about Yuya's identity. He introduces himself and Knight, but Knight exhibits hostility toward her, leaving Yuya wonder why he is against her joining his harem. The girl reveals her name as Luna and explains that she was training in the forest. Curious about Yuya's presence, she is taken aback when he claims to be training as well. Nevertheless, she expresses gratitude for his assistance, apologizing for her messy state and expressing a desire to clean up before heading to town. Yuya uses his portable bath and stands guard outside while Luna freshens up. Luna is amazed that he has such a rare item, and Yuya mentions that he acquired it from a crystal deer, impressing Luna further with his ability to defeat such a creature. Luna contemplates revealing that she is in the forest at a client's request, but Yuya fails to hear her and she pretends not to have spoken. Luna invites Yuya to train together in the forest since they are both there for training. Wanting to avoid leaving her to train alone, Yuya reluctantly agrees to accompany her. Maybe he is secretly hoping for a chance to share a bath with her. They engage in joint training sessions, with Yuya assisting Luna while she also teaches him. Their efforts yield progress, and we see Luna successfully defeating an elite goblin using her threads. Yuya compliments her for beating an elite, but she says she still has a long way to go, saying she needs to get even stronger so she can complete her mission. Yuya informs Luna that he must depart due to a school trip, but it doesn't really make sense to her. Apologizing for the abruptness, Yuya receives Luna's gratitude for all his assistance. On their final day of training, Yuya relaxes in a bath, only to be surprised by Luna's unexpected presence as she seeks to join him. Blushing with embarrassment, Yuya finds himself held by Luna, who shares her deep appreciation for their time together and promises to treasure it. She extends her gratitude once more and offers to wash his back, but her towel slips, and Yuya restrains his Excalibur like the alpha male he is. Looks like being the training partner was worth it after all. During his school trip, Yuya plays cards with his friends. Kaide thinks he looks tired, and Yuya admits to a lack of sleep, but remarkably he wins five consecutive games. Reflecting on his recent encounters, he thinks that he kept winning because he put a lot of points into his luck stat, thinking that the incident with Luna could have also been because of his luck. Upon reaching their destination, Sawada, their teacher, announces a two-day camping trip that requires them to rely on survival skills. She mentions the availability of fish in the river and edible plants, but Kaide express concerns about poisoning but she assures them of the school doctor's presence. The students find the doctor creepy due to the constant sounds of screams from her office. Akira suggests fasting for a day, but Sawada explains that it is part of a competitive lesson between the classes. Yuya wonders about potential rewards for the winners, but Sawada discloses that it affects her bonus, urging the students to do their best, but the students are not impressed. Left in the forest, the students contemplate their first course of action. Akira naively believes survival will be easy, but the others dismiss his notion as foolishness. Rin proposes that Yuya and Kaide attempt fishing while she and Akira search for edible plants. All the students gather by the river, where Kaide regrets their slow start upon noticing other students occupying favorable spots. Yuya uses his detection skill to lead them to a new location abundant with fish. Despite Kaide's skepticism about the shallow water, Yuya devises a plan and immerses himself. Drawing on Luna's teachings regarding predicting monster behavior, 
he successfully catches a fish with his bare hand, impressing Kaidei. Yuya continues to demonstrate his prowess, amassing a significant catch while the other students are amazed by his bare hand kung fu skill. Meanwhile, in a secluded part of town, Luna infiltrates a puppet-filled shop and skillfully decapitates the puppets using her threads. She acknowledges her growing power and reminisces about her time with Yuya. However, it is revealed that Luna is, in fact, an assassin who has been eliminating targets since childhood. Despite wishing she had encountered Yuya earlier, Luna recognizes the need to sever her ties with him due to her reputation as the headhunter. Preparing for her next mission, she steals herself and pushes the thoughts of Yuya aside. Meanwhile we see that Princess Lexia is going to the dark forest again to meet Yuya. Meanwhile, in the other world we see that Yuya and Kaide reunite with Rin, displaying their successful collection. Rin is surprised to hear Yuya caught all the fish with just his hands. Yuya wonders what happened to Akira, who is down on the ground. He complains that Rin used him to test mushrooms to see if they were poisonous and used him as bait for a bear. Yuya gets worried for him and checks his stats to see if he was poisoned, but is relieved to see he is okay. Rin and Akira show all the plants that they managed to gather, and Yuya praises them all, and using his skill he identifies and removes poisonous mushrooms. They proceed to the designated location to showcase their findings to the teacher. Yuya encounters Kori, and they discuss their experiences until she is called away by her team. Yuya and his team presents their collection to Sawada, who praises them for being the first to gather such a substantial amount of edible food. Excited about her bonus, she mentions that their cooking will also be graded. When asked who will cook, everyone points to Yuya. Yuya then activates his Gordon Ramsay skill to prepare quite an impressive meal. As the team enjoys the food, Yuya anxiously awaits their reaction. Sawada, who is drunk, joins them and expresses surprise at the delicious meal. Sawada remarks that Yuya's cooking surpasses even the meals prepared by top-notch chefs at the school. Yuya feels gratified to see others enjoying his food. Following the meal, Sawada stuns everyone by asking Yuya to marry her. She confesses her lack of cooking and domestic skills due to her research-focused life and lack of relationship experience. Impressed by his cooking, she considers him an excellent catch and urges him to marry her and take care of her. Looks like Yuya have managed to add another candidate for his harem. Everyone tells her it's a bad idea, and Kaide even says that Yuya is no good. This leaves Yuya feeling like a failure, yet Sawada persists, stating she will wait for him. Nervous about the appropriateness of the situation, Yuya declines the marriage proposal but acknowledges her as an incredible teacher. Sawada is happy hearing this and smothers him with her huge asset. Kaide also joins the play, and tries to pull him away, and Akira feels jealous. Later that night, Yuya teleports back home to check on Knight and prepares a meal for him. Observing Knight eat, Yuya reflects on the joy he feels when he can make others happy through his cooking. Returning to the camp, he finds everyone showering together and notices the curious gazes directed at him. Akira points out Yuya's remarkable physique, leaving him perplexed. However, Akira is amazed by Yuya's attractive appearance and impressive muscles. If it goes like this his Riz might tempt Akira to join his harem. In the girls' bathroom, Rin teases Kaide about her popularity among the boys due to her huge assets. Their conversation takes a turn when they encounter Kaori, who is surprised to learn about Sawada's desire to marry Yuya. The girls speculate about Sawada having certain advantages due to the assets she owns, and Kaide becomes inspired to make her own move on Yuya. Kori denies having feelings for Yuya when asked, though Rin finds her denial obvious. Meanwhile, Kori wonders about Yuya's preference in girls. Well, Yuya will have his handful managing the assets of his harem. The following morning, some students discover their belongings in disarray, raising concerns of a potential theft. Akira appears worried, while Yuya ensures their belongings are intact. As the group searches for breakfast, Akira becomes frightened upon noticing scratch marks on a tree. 
Yuya recalls Akira's previous role as a decoy for bears and realizes what might be happening. Suddenly, a bear emerges in front of the girls, prompting them to flee. The panicked students seek refuge as Sawada signals them to take cover. The bear crashes into a table, and is about to attack Sawada but Yuya confronts the bear, wrestling it to the ground and rendering it unconscious. He checks on Sawada, who acknowledges that she would typically reprimand him for fighting a bear but pardons him since he saved her life. She jokingly asks him if he wants her as a reward, but Yuya being the alpha male he is, politely declines. I wonder if Yuya continues like this, will his Excalibur ever have a chance to penetrate the glory wall? After that, Yuya learns from Kaori that the bear will be kept as a guard bear. If it exhibits aggressive behavior again, they will just eat it. Surprisingly, the bear seems to understand the arrangement, so, the issue is resolved, and the camping trip concludes. Back at Yuya's home, he prepares to meet the king in the other world alongside Lexia. On the way, he encounters a group of demons in the forest. Concerned about Lexia's safety, Yuya decides to confront the demons. Knight swiftly dispatches one, while Yuya employs various weapons, including a spear and a hammer, to defeat them and clear the area. Yuya admires the effectiveness of the sage's weapons once more. Among the defeated demons, he finds an intriguing helmet and tries it on. Unbeknownst to him, a peculiar rabbit observes his actions, and mentions he found him. Lexia's party arrives, Owen asks if the person wearing the helmet is Yuya and he removes the helmet, bringing relief to their faces. They express their joy at seeing him again and inquire if he is prepared to meet the king. Finally, they invite him to accompany them to the palace. However, a sudden incident occurs as night jumps on Lexia, saving her from a falling tree. Yuya swiftly slices the tree in half, noticing the threads reminiscent of Luna's abilities. Owen expresses confusion about the situation, while Luna is upset on her failure. As she attempts to escape, Yuya confronts and subdues her. Yuya is surprised to discover Luna's true identity, and Lexia joins him. Yuya reveals that Luna was the one who tried to attack Lexia, and he realizes that Knight had known all along. Yuya requests to heal Luna's wounds and bring her back to his house to question her about the situation. Despite her initial disbelief in Luna's villainous nature, Lexia grants Yuya's request. Owen rushes over, warning Lexia against going alone, but she asserts her intention to visit Yuya's house. Yuya uses his teleportation ability to return back to his home, leaving Owen behind. Lexia expresses surprise at Yuya's teleportation, she finds it difficult to believe and warns Yuya that if his ability becomes known, it could potentially lead to a war. Therefore, she implores him to promise not to use teleportation in front of others without careful consideration. Suddenly, Lexia calls out to Luna, questioning how long she pretends to be asleep. Luna realizes she's been caught, and Lexia acknowledges that Yuya also saw through her act, but he played along out of kindness. Lexia and Yuya inquire about Luna's backstory, but Luna dismisses it, suggesting that they kill her. However, Yuya expresses interest in hearing her story, prompting Luna to recount her life as an orphan who resorted to scavenging for survival. She was taken in by a man who taught her literacy and the skills of assassination, leading her to join the Dark Guild. Luna admits to being the notorious assassin known as the Headhunter, leaving Lexia surprised. Yuya realizes that Knight had been aware of Luna's true identity, which explains his initial aggression towards her. Luna reveals her failed mission to assassinate Lexia and the consequences she now faces, either execution or pursuit by the Dark Guild. Luna believes it's too late for redemption, but Lexia intervenes, proposing that Luna becomes her bodyguard to keep the assassination attempt a secret. By serving as the princess's protector, it would be harder for the Dark Guild to harm Lexia. Reluctantly, Luna agrees to the job. Lexia notices Luna has soft hand and inquires on how she keeps it that way. Luna mentions it's due to Yuya's extraordinary bathing item. Luna explains its ability to create baths anywhere, aiding in fatigue recovery and enhancing beauty. 
Intrigued, Lexia insists on using it herself and invites Luna and Yuya to join her. But the Riz God refrains from using his Excalibur to penetrate the double wall he is facing, causing Lexia to express disappointment. As the girls enjoy their bath together, Lexia checks with Luna to see if she is planning to join Yuya's harem. Luna insists they are just friends, but Lexia claims to sense otherwise. Lexia reveals her intention to marry Yuya, which Luna opposes. Luna finds herself unsure of her own feelings. Suddenly, Lexia declares a battle for Yuya's love, stating that they will fight over him, with Lexia declaring herself the winner if she can marry him. Confused by the declaration, Luna contemplates Yuya being taken away and accepts the challenge. Lexia proclaims Luna to be both her guard and her rival from that moment onward. After their bath, Yuya suggests preparing dinner. Although Lexia offers to cook, she struggles with even simple tasks and tries to cut the potato like she's trying to slay a monster and even loses her knife, almost causing an accident. Yuya ends up taking over the cooking duties. The girls enjoy the delicious meal, and Lexia compliments Yuya's culinary skills and grabs him trying to showcase her assets. Luna, feeling jealous, requests that Yuya feed her since her wounds aren't fully healed, and she opens her mouth wide awaiting Yuya to put it in, I meant the food. Yuya agrees to her request and feeds her. As Luna eats, she smirks at Lexia, who becomes jealous and demands to be fed as well. Yuya points out that she isn't injured, but Lexia, using her authority as a princess, commands him, leaving him no choice but to put it in her mouth as well, I meant the food. Just when Yuya thinks he has had enough, the girls decide to put it in his mouth together, I meant the food. During the night, the girls sleep together, and Yuya, exhausted but content, reflects on the enjoyable time they had. The next day, they reunite with Owen and his men. Yuya apologizes for leading them astray, and Owen inquires about their new companions. Yuya reintroduces Knight, and Owen expresses gratitude for Yuya's previous heroics in saving Lexia. Curiosity about Luna's identity arises, and Lexia straightforwardly reveals that she was the assassin who attempted to kill her but will now serve as her guard. The revelation shocks everyone, and Luna can't believe how quickly Lexia disclosed her secret. Owen promptly surrounds Luna, but Lexia intervenes and instructs him to stand down. Owen remains skeptical, stating that Luna cannot be trusted. However, Lexia points out that they slept together, implying that if Luna intended to harm her, she would have done so already. After hearing that Owen gives up, and decides to be careful around Luna. Yuya mentions that he cannot accompany them to the palace anymore as the extra day spent at the house has left him with insufficient time for the journey, and he feels the need to return to school. Owen advises him to visit whenever he has the opportunity, providing directions to a nearby village where Yuya can obtain directions to the capital. Lexia bids Yuya farewell, urging him to visit soon. However, Luna rushes back to Yuya, kissing him and expressing gratitude for everything he has done. Lexia, devastated, demands to go back to kiss him as well, but Owen ignores her pleas and continues leading the group. Yuya ponders the significance of the kiss and wonders if Luna harbors feelings for him, but he decides to relax by taking a bath instead. Suddenly, Yuya notices a strange creature that sneaked in, and he receives a notification indicating that he has successfully tamed it. The creature appears confused but accepts the situation. Yuya contemplates checking its stats and discovers that his appraisal skill has leveled up, allowing him to see the creature's abilities. He learns that it possesses a skill called Holy Ground and requests to see its capabilities. The creature creates a field of light around them, providing a beneficial effect. Impressed, Yuya decides to give it a name, choosing Akatsuki, which means dawn. Night reminds Yuya about the time, prompting him to hurriedly return to school. In their class, Sawada announces an upcoming ball game competition that will impact her bonus, urging the students to give their best effort. The first event is soccer, and the class is divided into two teams. Yuya, lacking familiarity with the sports rules, 
takes up the position of goalkeeper. As the game commences, Rio proves to be a formidable force, single-handedly taking on the opposing team and scoring a goal. Kaide is impressed, but Rin reveals their second secret weapon, instructing her to jump. Kaide starts jumping and Rin grabs her, mentioning she is a great asset to the team as she has two weapons of mass destruction, but the plan backfires, as Akira steals the ball from Ryo. Akira effortlessly evades everyone and takes a shot at the goal, but Yuya swiftly stops it, leaving everyone astonished by his agility. Uncertain of what to do next, Yuya turns to Ryo, who advises him to throw the ball as hard as he can. Following Ryo's advice, Yuya hurls the ball, and to his surprise, it sails straight into the opposing goal, leaving him pondering whether he has scored a point. Meanwhile, we see that the girl from the fashion industry has found Yuya and reached his school. We learn that Yuya is selected to play ping pong for the ball sports competition. A limousine awaits Yuya after school, and a man introduces him mentioning that he is from the entertainment industry, and his director appears asking him to join them but Yuya politely declines, valuing his high school life. The director is shocked and expresses her disbelief at a teenager rejecting such an offer. Mio enters the scene, flashing her thing, I meant the glasses. She asks the director not to make him hard, sorry, I meant she asks not to be hard on him. Yuya's friends are surprised to learn that he appeared in the magazine with the hottest model. Suddenly, the director spots a flyer for a ball sports competition and devises a plan. She intends to disguise as members of press and use the academy competition as cover to take Yuya's photos without his consent, and drags down his assistant to meet the chairman. Deep in the forest, night casts a waterfall spell, and Yuya strikes down a skeleton. Despite his training, he feels unsatisfied with his ability to switch between physical and magical attacks. Determined to get stronger, Yuya decides to venture deeper into the forest. As they walk, he notices the big black things, I meant the hard black trees, and sees unusually large Akatsuki, wondering when did he get leveled up so quickly. But his observation is cut short when it attacks him, he learns that it's a level 10 mithril boar, and it continues attacking him relentlessly. Just as the boar charges for a final blow, a voice offers assistance, and a white rabbit appears, dispersing a magical wave that destroys the black trees along with the boar. Yuya learns that it is a level 4 kick rabbit, and it tells them to show them their kicks. Akatsuki goes first but the rabbit is disappointed, and says, there's less hope there than me reaching a thousand subs. He senses some potential in Knight's kick, and when Yuya shows his kick, he's impressed mentioning that he has talent. He demonstrates his powerful kick technique, and offers to teach him. After extensive training, Yuya successfully takes down a tree with the force of his kick. The rabbit reveals its purpose, it has chosen Yuya as its successor, a divine, to protect innocent lives from malicious beings known as vials. But who's gonna take a rabbit drinking carrot mocktail seriously, so, he rejects the offer of becoming a divine but expresses his desire to protect the people he's met in this world. Impressed by his determination, the rabbit agrees to train Yuya further on the condition that he teaches him magic along the way. The rabbit tells him that the barrier which Yuya has around his house is created in such a way that no one with bad intention can enter his house, seeing how Yuya has able to create a powerful magic he urges Yuya to train under him, while Yuya thinks to himself that he just inherited it from the sage. Yuya accepts the offer, and they become each other's master. In the deep forest, Yuya trains by fighting a level 3 king mithril boar, and defeats it using his spear. Knight and Akatsuki congratulate him, and Yuya notices SS rank items dropped by the defeated creature. However, the rabbit reveals that even more powerful items exist, including triple S rank and legend rank. Suddenly, a notification appears about his increase in level, and the rabbit explains that Yuya will evolve giving him more cheat skills, and also it wouldn't affect his appearance. After that the rabbit decide to call it for the day and hops away. At school, as the ball competition approaches, the director presents Yuya with a special challenge. A formidable opponent, known by the nickname Point Sniper, takes the stage. 
The sniper showcase his serve impressing the audience, but Yuya believes that his speed is no match compared to the monsters he has faced from the other world. During the second serve Yuya focuses, and hits it back but it was so powerful that he put a hole in the board. Yuya withdraws from the match, so as to avoid causing any injuries to other. We then see Kaide running up to Yuya with her huge assets, and drags him down to play volleyball, and he agrees to give his best. The director redirects the crew to the volleyball arena. The match begins, but soon everyone is shocked as Yuya destroys the court with his smash, while the photographers are focusing their clicks on covering Kaide's huge assets. The opponent team withdraws, and Yuya and his team continues to dominate matches. Meanwhile, the director is angry at her photographers as the camera is full of Kaide's assets but the only assets she cares about are Yuya's. We then hear a man screams, and Kaori comes to Yuya, pleading to take her teammate's spot. As the man is carried out he warns Yuya to watch out for the serve. As the match unfolds, Kaori starts the serve, and it seems she's out there to kill someone as she keeps throwing away her racket during the serve, and Yuya realizes the server he should truly be cautious of is actually Kaori. Looks like even though Yuya has the cheat skill, Kaori is way more destructive. Yuya then counters the opponent's attacks by himself, evening covering for Kaori's misses, and secures their victory. The director also gets some good coverage of Yuya's asset this time. Afterwards, Kaori approaches Yuya and expresses gratitude. She asks him to close his eyes and gives him a kiss, but I guess Yuya was mesmerized by her fragrance and didn't realize what she did. In the forest at night, the rabbit uses magic to fend off the mysterious girl who possesses the power of vile. Surprised by the rabbit's abilities, the girl discovers that the rabbit is still a student under Yuya's guidance, and revises its target to eliminate Yuya first. The rabbit acknowledges the creature's power and vows to teach Yuya everything before his life is endangered. Meanwhile in the real world, we see the director examining the photos they had taken of Yuya the other day and plans to recruit him for their agency. Back at Yuya's home, Kori tries to teach him math, but he is struggling to plug his solution into her equation. As their final exams approach, Yuya feels overwhelmed, especially since he has always struggled with math, and his cheat skill only helps him with language-related subjects. Kori offers to help and suggests studying together at his house, and that's how she ended up there. After studying for a while, Kori suddenly gets up and asks Yuya if she can use the bathroom. As Kori goes to use the bathroom, she stumbles upon the mysterious door. Yuya reveals to her that it's a magical door that leads to another world, and no one can enter there without his permission. She wonders what he means by another world, so he explains that it's a world where magic and super abilities exist. And to prove his point, he shows her his impressive water magic skills. He mentions that with these powers, he has saved her countless times from delinquents and even rescued her from a burning building. Kori finally realizes just how strange and extraordinary Yuya truly is. Surprisingly, unlike a normal person who should be freaking out, Kaori is calm about everything, and even decides to visit the other world without a second thought. I wonder if it's a cheat skill or Yuya's riz that destroys the common sense of his harem girls. On the other side, Kaori witnesses flying birds and unique plants that never grew on earth. Yuya went on to explain that night was a black Fenrir and Akatsuki belonged to the Maoju species, something similar to the pig family. Akatsuki didn't seem to like that reference, well I don't blame him, who would like to be referred to as a pig. As Kaori got up, her status system appeared, measuring her various abilities. Yuya noticed that all of her stats were ten times higher than when he first started out. I guess this would explain how she could throw the racket so hard in the previous episode. He tells her how he came here leveled up like using a cheat. But she didn't mind that at all and was more interested in exploring this fascinating world. Yuya tells her about the dangerous monsters lurking in the forest and promises to take her next time. He also asks to keep this a secret. Kori is fascinated by this extraordinary world and agrees to keep their secret between the two of them, bringing them closer together. Back at the royal capital, 
the king inquired why the mysterious man from the forest hadn't shown up. Owen apologized for his absence, and Luna admitted her plan to assassinate Lexia which disrupted Yuya's schedule. Enraged, he drew his sword to confront Luna, but she effortlessly stopped him, and Lexia expressed her hatred for his violent behavior. Lexia reminded him that it was her decision to make Luna her bodyguard. Reluctantly, the king respected her choice, not wanting his daughter to hate him. Owen reveals to the king that Luna belonged to the Dark Guild and is the infamous headhunter. It was Yuya who caught her. Owen mentions that, after capturing Luna, Yuya arranged for Luna and Lexia to stay at his house. After Yuya managed to catch her he made Luna and Lexia spend the night at his house. When the king heard this, he couldn't believe his daughter would be staying with another man. Fueled by anger, he vents by slashing a chair and mentions that Yuya will become his sword's next victim, as he suspects that his daughter's holy wall might have been penetrated by Yuya's Excalibur. Meanwhile, we see that the masked man learned of Luna's failure and her capture. He learns that the person from the darkest regions is about to visit the palace and he devises a plan to make Lexia and the king disappear, believing it was his time to take the throne. He gave his men a magical sealing barrier that would help them infiltrate the castle and prevent any magicians from defending the king. If things went wrong, they could blame Yuya for it all. We then see Yuya hunting a sheep, and among the rare drops he also gets a bed known as the Paradise Bed. He mentions that Jose Academy is on a substitute break, and he plans to meet the king during this break. Yuya finally reached his first city in this world and when he saw different species there, it finally felt real to him that he was in another world but he needed to make some money first. So, he went to a pawn shop, where the merchant mistook Yuya for a noble due to his appearance, and was amazed by the spices and exquisite glasses Yuya possessed. The merchant eagerly bought the items for 100 gold coins, but Yuya mentions that he doesn't know its value, causing the merchant to fall in shock. He tells Yuya that the money is enough for a family of four to live for 20 years without working. Well, the merchant seems to have missed a good chance of scamming Yuya. He then gives Yuya a guild card, allowing him to be identified in the country, and gives information on reaching the royal capital. Yuya finally reaches the royal capital, and Owen prepares an audience with the king. Yuya, unprepared for such an occasion, worries about his attire. But Owen assures him it was an unofficial audience. Inside, the king questions Yuya, who had saved Lexia but he doesn't care if he actually saved her and screams that he will eliminate the bastard who seduced his daughter. Owen and others finally calm him down, but the king was displeased with his lack of a gift for Lexia. Yuya apologized and presented the paradise bed from his void box. This gesture pleased Lexia, but the king is furious, asking Yuya if he is planning to lure Lexia into a world of paradise on top of that bed. Owen intervenes, explaining the custom of gifting a bed as a marriage proposal. While Lexia is excited about her glory wall being penetrated by Yuya's Excalibur, Yuya realizes that he has messed up, but before the situation could escalate further. A group of assassins appears, surrounding them. The king ordered his guards to fight, but the assassins activated a magic barrier, neutralizing their efforts. Chaos erupted as the assassins attacked the royal family. Owen and Luna fought back, and Yuya with his pets joined the battle. He easily neutralized all the enemies and when the leader of the assassins targeted Yuya, he was defeated with a single blow. After the fight, while Lexia scolds her father's behavior towards Yuya, Owen discovers a crest among the assassins that belongs to Lexia's brother Rhaegar. Realizing the danger their country faced, Owen pleads with Yuya to support them. We learn that King has entered his chambers without speaking to anyone. Yuya thinks about Owen's request for assistance. Just as he approached the door, Lexia emerges, and she offers him to show around the capital. However, their discussion was interrupted by Luna, who suggests accompanying them, so that Yuya doesn't get tempted to use his Excalibur on Lexia. A heated argument ensued, with each trying to be Yuya's guide. Owen proposed him as Yuya's guide, but both Lexia and Luna dismissed the idea. As they strolled through the town, 
Owen observed them from a distance. Lexia insisted on going to the jewelry shop, while Luna expressed her interest in visiting the blacksmiths. Yuya found himself caught between their big assets, and the men in town seemed envious of this. As they explored, Yuya saw the emblem of the Adventurer's Guild, prompting Luna to inquire if he had any interest in joining. Yuya disclosed that he had registered with a merchant guild. Luna suggested he join the guild, as it would enable him to earn more money from trading monster materials. Lexia too supported the idea. Inside the guild, the receptionist handed them registration papers, and Yuya wondered if he needed to register his pets as well. The receptionist reassured him that it wasn't necessary. Yuya hesitated when asked about his magic types, ultimately choosing wind, fire, and water. He also questioned whether he should disclose his true magic energy capacity, but the receptionist informed him they would use a crystal ball to measure it. Luna's measurement yielded a yellow glow, leading Yuya to wonder about its significance. When he placed his hand on the sphere, it instantly shattered, shocking everyone. The receptionist inquired about Luna's weapon skills, to which she mentioned her proficiency with threads. Upon examining Yuya's report, the receptionist noticed his ability to use three different types of magic, deeming it extraordinary. She revealed that wielding three magic types would categorize him as a legendary hero. The receptionist inquired about Yuya's preference for weapons, to which he confirmed his use of spears and swords. She processed their paperwork through a magical device, resulting in the appearance of their black guild cards. They were informed that they would begin at the F rank, and were reminded not to over-collect herbs during collection-based quests so as to avoid hindering their growth. As Yuya is looking up to take a quest on the guild board, a drunk girl, named Glenna approaches him, and showcasing her large assets, she mentions her amazement that Yuya was able to destroy the magic crystal, and while leaving she expresses her interest in working together. Lexia wishes to register as adventurer in order to prevent Yuya from increasing his harem, but due to her princess title she can't join. She instead decides to look for a quest where she can assist and they end up doing a herb gathering quest. With Yuya's cheat skill, it's just a piece of cake for him as it also tells him the proper way to collect them. As they complete gathering the herbs, Owen arrives and informs them that they have found the location of Rhaegar and asks Yuya to assist them. Yuya goes with Owen, and, they arrived at an isolated cabin deep in the forest, and as soon as they tried entering the door, a knife was thrown directly at one of the guards. Inside they saw the prince holding a knife up to one of the soldiers. Immediately, Yuya called up to Knight, who bite his arm, freeing the soldier from his grasp. They corner him, but he began crazily running around and destroying all the furniture in his house. Realizing that he had failed, he tries to kill himself. However, Yuya prevents him but the crazy prince starts attacking him. Yuya dodges every single one of his strikes, and takes him down with Knight's and Akatsuki's help. As they were ready to take the prince away, a whirlwind suddenly tore through the wall, revealing a girl standing before them. After assessing the situation, she declared that the prince's usefulness had come to an end. Puzzled, the prince questioned why she had abandoned her plan to place him on the throne. To his surprise, she confessed that her true intention was to spark wars and kill many people as possible. The prince realized that he was being tricked, and as he was about to be killed, Owen interfered, but an arrow controlled by the girl stopped his attack. The girl then unleashed a rain of arrows down onto them. Just as they were about to be struck, Yuya summoned an energy barrier, rendering the arrows ineffective. Grateful, one of the guards thanked him by name, which the girl overheard. Learning that he was Yuya, she considered herself fortunate but will have to wait another time to kick his ass, because of her depleted stamina. So she decided to retreat for now. While the soldiers tended to one another, Yuya wonders about the girl's identity. I believe he is probably planning to recruit her into his harem. Meanwhile, in the real world we see Kaori rang Yuya's doorbell, but no one was home, so she walked off. After his last face off with the vile girl, Luna is amazed by someone stronger than Yuya, while Yuya ponders the mysterious girl's identity. 
Owen enters the room and invites him to Rygar's hearing. As they walk together, Lexia worries about her brother's fate. Inside the audience chamber, we witness the guards forcibly removing Rygar's mask. Upon seeing the extent of his scars, even his own father turns away in disgust. Rhaegar blames Lexia, whose uncontrolled magic caused his disfigurement. Isolated in a cell and abandoned by his family, he seeks revenge against them, feeling hopeless. Now, he no longer wishes to live. Yuya, drawing from his own painful past, offers to use a special potion made from the legendary cure-all herb, astonishing everyone. Despite being healed, Rhaegar believes his fate is sealed. However, Lexia forgives him and pleads with their father, who reluctantly agrees. Lexia expresses her desire to be friends again with her brother. Moved by her actions, Rhaegar breaks down in tears. With the trial concluded, Rhaegar expresses gratitude towards Yuya. The king proposes a reward, triggering an argument between Lexia and Luna over offering their hands in marriage. Rhaegar proposes an alternative reward idea, leading to the king granting him all of Rhaegar's properties and the title of Knight Baron. While Yuya is shocked, the girl's dream of Yuya's Excalibur penetrating their wall is once again shattered. At night, Yuya has a nightmare about his battle against the girl, where he is being overwhelmed by arrows, causing him to wake up. The next day, after school, his friends invite him to hang out, but he declines and rushes back home. Along the way, Cory asks to study together, but Yuya dismisses her, mentioning that he is in a hurry. Upon arriving home, he immediately begins training and wonders if his master, Yusagi, would know how to defeat her but resolves to train nonetheless. Suddenly, night growls in the air, and Yuya senses a powerful magical force heading his way. Realizing the girl's presence, Yuya demands an explanation for her relentless pursuit. Her sole desire is revenge, prompting Yuya to vow to defeat her and uncover the truth. A storm of arrows descends upon him, trapping him in mid-air within the path of her bow. Meanwhile, Kaori, finding Yuya's door unanswered, breaks in and enters the dangerous world beyond the open gate. Explosions in the distance grab her attention as an intense battle between Yuya and the girl unfolds. As the girl continues to rain down her arrows, Yuya transforms his armor and manages to deliver a powerful kick while Knight slams her to the ground. Admiring their skills, the girl increases her attack's power and launches an explosive arrow that covers a vast area. Kori's scream catches Yuya's attention as the arrows divert unexpectedly, almost claiming her life. The girl's next attack puts Yuya in a vulnerable position, only to be saved by Yusagi's timely intervention, who deflects the attack with his kick. He mentions that he has done some investigation and reveals the girl's name as Yu-T. She is seeking vengeance for her fallen master, the Divine Archer, who was betrayed and killed by humans. The battle continues. Spotting an opportunity from Yusagi's attack, Yuya confronts her arrows head-on. Distracted, Yudi gets bitten by night from behind, and Yusagi's kick sends her crashing down. She then uses the power of the vial to transform into Ultra Instinct mode. She charges at Yusagi, leaving Yuya uncertain about his next move. Finally, the writers decide to give Akatsuki a chance to hog the spotlight, so he steps in like a boss and activates his ultimate ability. A blue barrier neutralizes the vial's power. Yusagi realizes that Akatsuki is no ordinary powerless pig, but a contender for the best pet companion of the season award. Yuya teleports behind the girl, rendering her unconscious and preventing her from falling. After the battle, Yusagi reveals that there are a few divines in their world who could oppose the vile, and one of them is Akatsuki. Yusagi then leaves the girl with Yuya and hops away, and Yuya adds another member to his harem. Finally, Kori appears, but behind her, there is a giant orc about to attack her, yet Yuya easily kills it with his spear. Walking past her, he asks if he scares her due to his overpowered ability. However, Kori reassures him that nothing has changed, and she will continue to be his top harem girl. 
As the anime ends, we are shown more scenes where Kaori meets Yuya's otherworldly harem and joins them in bathing together. Back in the real world, his siblings are standing near his home, probably wanting to reconcile, and UT is enrolled in his academy. As Kaori enters Yuya's classroom, their eyes meet, and a brief exchange of glances occurs between them. This is where the season ends. I hope you enjoyed this recap. See you again next time.